has joined us today. So as we have um, discussed, we have a special guest today, um, Jenny with Chicago Title. And we have worked with and near and around Jenny for gosh, some time now. That feels like maybe a year or two close to it. Um, and today is a special edition of the Realtor Toolbox series that the Synergy community puts on for the Synergy community. And today's topic is about leads. So Jenny at Chicago Title is um, pretty much an expert here. You guys really specialize in offering agents um, different types of opportunities to find and source leads. And anytime we've asked you for help with leads, you've always given us really not only great information, but great tips on how to use that information. So that's the topic for today's Realtor Toolbox series is Jenny with Chicago Title will be sharing with us her presentation on um, leads and lead generating in 2021, so all the latest. Um, and with that, um, hey, Cody, will you just make sure that she can share screen real quick? Yeah, um, I, before you do that, I, I just want to first just say a couple things, just some pointers before we get started. I, I recommend that you have a notebook out and you can interrupt me throughout if you have questions or if you want to wait until the end, it's really up to you. And then if you guys have really have had enough of this and it's okay, it's a lot of content in here, just say stop, you know, we, we need to roll this into part two. I, I, it, is, it is intense. And I'm just going to start off with like two testimonials. And I know that you work for a team and you have a great leader, Cody, but sometimes, you know, it doesn't hurt to hear someone else's voice. And, and someone else's story when it comes to real estate. So I am going to give you a deep dive into uh, what happened to me as a real estate agent. So I've been a realtor um, previously uh, for 13 years here in Las Vegas. I went down in the housing crisis from being a top producing agent over five years. I was like number one. And then I went all the way down at the bottom. And what triggered that was that one, I was immature at the time as a real estate agent. I was spoiled. I had business coming in. I was selling houses and I wasn't even there. I mean, it was just insane when I got into real estate. And I didn't know how, I didn't know how to really work for my business. So that's just one little lesson that I wanted just to start off with by saying today's market condition is very difficult. And it reminds me of that. And it has to do with market conditions that are shifting drastically and, and make you feel like, what am I going to do to survive? So that is what my PowerPoint is about. And I hope that if you have any, you know, questions of really of how this happened, how I lost my career in real estate, that's really what happened. And I was blessed and I was so lucky that I was recruited into the title industry when I did. And I'm grateful for that, but that seriously is what had happened to me. And then the second bullet point of my testimonial is to share is that I highly recommend you also write this down. And here we go. To the extent that you avoid to not contact your past clients, your bank account will never grow. And I didn't do that. And again, that's the second part of this equation of why I'm not a realtor today. It's that powerful. So you do have to just think of those two different things. And again, you can weigh in with me later about it. And now we'll move forward um, into the presentation. Any questions from Cody, Lacey, anything? No, but I didn't know that that was your story. That's super interesting. I'm, I'm very excited to, to hear what you're going to share. Okay. So let me just take you guys away for a second. So 2020 was the hottest year to farm. And it's not too late to get started today in 2021. Uh, homeowners are more likely to take a double glance at your postcard mailer. They are more likely to answer their door and the homeowners are more likely to talk to you when you call. Uh, does anybody want to give a reason why um, 
they the homeowners are going to talk to you today someone because they're home yes <laughs> correct that is that is one you know that is the, the number one answer however there's a couple things that go along with that and it's that that people are not going back to work Large corporations, entrepreneurships, they've really found an effective way that they can save thousands and thousands of dollars from commercial space, rent, insurance. And so that is true. People are home. They're not going back to work anytime soon. Uh, the second reason is that we are working far more hours than normal being at home. We don't have the distractions. We're not, we're not, we're getting stuck at our desk. So when they're looking out the window and they see the mailman coming, they are going to take that break and they're going to go outside and they're going to look at their mail. Or, and they're more willing to talk to you at the door or answer that call. So it's about a distraction. And then the third thing that is a reason is that we're not running around with our heads cut off anymore. We're not as high functioning people anymore. We're not dashing to get our dry cleaning clothes. I'm not running to print flyers out for presentation and grabbing coffee and bagels and everything to provide to a class. You know, so we're just running, we're just at a different pace and we're being more present with people. So that is why. Here are a list of strategies on how to generate business that doesn't cost you any money. So if we have some agents that sometimes get lost or they get overwhelmed with where do I start with my business, you can start right here. And here's about, you know, eight to 10 um, ways that you can generate business on your own. And then you want to pick like one of these or maybe two, and then just become good at it. Build a profile, do your homework on it and become the expert. So we have prospecting by phone. We have social media platforms. There's door knocking. You can create leads by open houses and rental leads. You can create a Facebook group page. You can send out videos, which is king right now. You know, they say a video a day keeps the competition away. You can send emails, text messages, and then of course the standard at the bottom are networking referrals, your SOI and volunteering. Uh, I'm sure some of you are like, well, we can't really volunteer or network today because of the pandemic. And that, that is a little true, but you do have ways that you can't allow that to stop you. We, the more conversations that you have with people, the more that you are going to win. And there's, it's as simple as that. We had a presentation for our sales team over the summer. We had a broker uh, talk to us that is a top broker in Arizona. And he said he had a lot of agents that were new and they just didn't know how to how am I going to sell real estate during a pandemic? And he really just said that simple line. You just have to talk to people. Find a way to talk to people. Any questions so far, you guys? Anyone? No? No, this is really good. Thank you. Okay. Double checking. Creating your expertise, you can create a niche and that doesn't cost you anything either. You can specialize in probate, you can specialize in investor, divorce, marriage certificates, there's senior citizen certifications, you can become a VA specialist. We have for sale by owners, we have expired, you can become a short sale specialist for closure, even a new home builder. And that specialist. And then we you can also specialize in listings or even buyers. There's a few that that stand out today. I mean, certainly today with the market conditions, I would be pulling all farms of people who own more than one property in Las Vegas and seeing if they want to sell their property. Then you don't have to worry about finding them a residence. So that's huge right now. Pull investor reports through title. Then we have a senior citizen is another um top of the list expertise. And the reason why in a senior citizen community is that there's always movement in there. We have active moving into non-active square footage homes in the community. And then we have the non-active selling their home and going into assistant living. So that's a great sector to dive into. 
And then we have a new home builder specialist. Right now today, if you're taking any um, relocation leads or you get an out-of-state buyer that's on your phone for a lead, you want to be prepared and already know what new home tracks are out there. You've seen the models, you know which ones you like the best in the top from one to five. You wanna know who has standing inventory, if they have incentives. So when you get that call and they give you the criteria, you already know where you're taking them. So it's imperative that you know your inventory and, and drive around when you have time and, and make relationships with those builders agents. They really can help you and support your business. If you have a sphere of influence or a lot of agents get confused on uh, what your SOI is and, and everybody kind of does have a different opinion of it and that is okay. But I have, your SOI to me is under three categories. One is your people that you know, two are the people that you have sold homes to, your past clients. And then third are your active and potential clients. Everyone needs to be touched, and sometimes they can be touched in a different way as how you're going to target them. So you can create a strategy that is by these five bullet points, by phone, video, email, text message, Facebook message, and a handwritten card. And you take your group of your people, and you divide them into these groups, and then you figure out, like, how many times am I going to touch them a month? If you need content, this is where you'll pull me in and I will help you with creating a campaign. We have so much content to help you with this. So this, this presentation is not just to give it to you. It's also to follow up on everything that, that I'm providing. Here's a second marketing touch that is complimentary. It doesn't cost you anything either. And that you can list out a monthly year calendar and every month you are going to send them something out of the box that's a slam dunk, that is a powerful value piece. And we recommend that you go by like a holiday is always helpful. So for Valentine's Day, you would wanna send out a Valentine's Day card to your top 50 people. And you're just gonna put in there, happy Valentine's Day, I'm your realtor for life. They really appreciate a Valentine's Day card. It goes a long way. Who's this? You really don't, um, you can, you know, everyone gets flooded with Christmas cards, but a Valentine's Day card truly will stand out. Um, in November, this is another hot one. You can have, if you're farming your own neighborhood or you want to deliver pumpkin pies to your top, you know, past clients of the last three years, you can do that. You guys can decide of, I'm not gonna man micromanage you on how many pies to send in November, but you can also do something at your residence where you can just send announcement out to drive by, say hi and pick up a pie. You know, it was a huge thing during the pandemic, you know, for November. You know, a lot of agents did that and it's successful. People love it. They have a parade of cars coming. Client, I mean, the residents get out and talk to one another if it wasn't like pandemic time, but it's a great hit. Doesn't cost you a lot of money. You can get a small buntlet, um, pumpkin buntlet at Nothing Bunt Cakes. Or you can go to, there's some bakeries in town that are more than welcome to give you guys a deal on a small pumpkin pie, you know, in bulk. Some other ideas for, well, what do I do? Um, at springtime, you can have a, a email piece that is letting everyone know that Nevada Energy is still passing out complimentary um, Echo Smart thermostats. And there's a lot of people that get comfortable and they forget, and you can just remind them that, hey, you need to get one of these. They will save you a lot of money. That's an idea. You know, for another topic for the month, you could create a piece on solar. You know, there's a lot of confusion out there. What solar company should I use? What is the best? What are the rates? Uh, should, do I own one? Do I lease one? This is another piece of value that you could do for one of these months. And of course, you can do one on the Raiders or what's coming new to Las Vegas. You, you get my drift. You just want to make it um, valuable. And you have to prepare in advance each month to know what you're doing or it's never going to you're never going to execute it. Here are three social media platforms where you can steal content at your fingertips that for the most part is free. Uh, this is goes a long way with your branding and exposure. I believe in this, you know, in any type of market, you have to put this content out there. 
And if you're not familiar with Core Fact or Breakthrough Broker, and even our NetSheet app has a premium section where there's tons of videos and flyers that are already branded to you that you can post on Instagram, Facebook, you can text it, you can print it, you can keep it at open houses. I mean, there's just a slew of things that you can do. Uh, if you go to Core Fact is actually my favorite and they always have updated content that you can just save and save in your pictures and then you can figure out how you want to get that content out. But they have fantastic pieces. They're colorful, they're bright, their messaging is sharp. And for anyone who struggles with writing, it's done. Uh, they also have free letters right now, buyer letters, and they also have different categories on if you were trying to target like um, notice of defaults. So they do break it down. So if you go to corefact.com, there's a, there's a toolbar that goes across and it reads, there's, it reads Academy. And if you drop down, it will say free content. So that's where all their pieces are. And I will show you just a couple of them of what they look like. Um, for anyone who does use Corefact, um, they are the number one most rated successful postcard company. And the reason why is because they have a link on the postcard that says, do you want to know what your home is worth? And then when that homeowner types it in, then you get notified. Um, working with me, we can give you a 5% five, 5 discount on any um, product through Corefact. And then there's 15% off of selected pieces through a coaching program of that I'm in. Here's a couple of their pieces. Um, the one to the left, I really like. Um, there's the one on the right. This came out like pre-pandemic and they felt that we were gonna have some hardship in Las Vegas or around with foreclosures and short sales. And it really hasn't happened yet because then the moratorium hasn't been released. But if anyone is interested in having some pieces that have to do with what has happened and what's going to happen, just reach out to me and I'll send them to you. But they're not aggressive and they're eye-catching. So I really am a big fan. Here is a flyer from Breakthrough Broker. And this is a seller's roadmap. I would be rotating this this piece everywhere. I would also have it in my listing presentations. They also have a buyer's roadmap and they also have different, they have different pieces that are the same subject. This, they're designed differently. So I would be using these all the time. Here's another piece on the left from Breakthrough Broker, 20 reasons to hire, hire me to sell your home. I would be dropping this off at homes. I would be sending it. I would be doing everything with this. And on the bottom right, there's a, a figure of a, a man, but they also have one for a female. So when you go to the site, check it out. And then to the right, the final piece is a marketing piece from our NetSheet app. And I love this one. It's extremely inf informative. It's simple to read. And this would be for any of your tenants that are on the fence that they should buy now. So this really breaks down the total equity that they would make if they bought within a year. It's showing them the difference between how much they would save by owning versus rent. And it's, it's easy. And this is a real good um, marketing piece. And Jenny, sorry, really fast. These last yes. two players that you just shared, that's the Chicago agent one. Um, no, the last one um, with the rent were sh was Chicago agent. And the other two were from Breakthrough Broker. And okay. then the first two were from Corfac. Got it. Okay. Uh, for this group, we should mention also that um, a lot of, what she's showing you there, uh, very similar things, if not the same things are found in the EXP Enterprise Dashboard in the Marketing Center. Um, I think the Marketing Center actually uses Breakthrough Broker as its base um, of what everything is built off of. It, I know at one point it was, I don't know if it still is, but if you've ever spent some time in that Marketing Center there on Enterprise, you'll see that there's a lot of really good stuff like this that you can use for these same purposes. Yes. We don't care where you get it. <laughs> I mean, for you just have to get it out there to your network. I promise you, if you consistently do it, you will get the results. This slide is if you have a marketing budget, uh, HomeBot is a affordable software. It is a email software. If you're not familiar with HomeBot, you can just reach out to me and I will give you like a pri private demonstration on it. We talked about 
Corfact, which is a postcard company, and we've spoken about this is a great time to take these letters that they have that are written so effectively and send them out to your farm or to whomever. Uh, I, we recommend that you drop a pop by by um, with a little announcement with a little trinket if you have a budget. We can give you ideas for four pages of Popeye ideas. A community events, I had mentioned the pie um, event, but you can also do any other type of event, such as you could rent a photographer or hire a photographer for a couple hours. And if you have a neighborhood that has a park in it, invite some neighbors to come and take photos with their pets. And it's, it works, people remember you. There's also digital marketing ads. That's just something different that you can mix into your standard, you know, touches when you um, market a subdivision or even your, your own sphere of influence or anyone. And then I also listed three new social media platforms. If we have some people that are on the Zoom that are interested in social media. So we have Wall Garden, we have Cato and Back at You. If Cody, you're interested in hearing any of those, and if we have time at the end of this, I'll go back and go over it. I just don't want to do take a deep dive into all of them, and so that you guys don't get um, bored. Sound okay? Sounds great. Thank okay. you. Here's just a slide on Cato, and basically, what Cato is, this is just it is a very unique product. This is another one that's up at the very top of my list, which I'm, um, I'm a fan. It is a live chat bot that gets installed on your personal Facebook page and it's super affordable. It's cheaper than coffee. So that's why I like it. There's majority of everyone is on your personal Facebook page. Really, there's not a whole lot of traffic that's on your business Facebook page. So that's why you know I like to share it with my agents. Here's some Popeye ideas, even for St. Patrick's Day. If you are farming a neighborhood, you can go to Pinterest, you can go to Canva. They have a surplus of slogans and little trinkets of tags on what to say, and you can get them printed and, and drop them off to the residents. I'm shifting our presentation like onto the farming side and this is where you have two ways to farm a neighborhood. You have a lucky way, and then you have a way of owning your farm. So the lucky way is if you just recently sold a property in the neighborhood and you really like the, the price point or you're just a fan in the neighborhood and you want to send a couple mailers out and just see what happens, that's the lucky way. Um, will you get results from sending it out once or twice? Absolutely, you could have the luck of the draw and someone's gonna call you. And this is how it goes down. They're at their house, their phone rings. They're, they, they've just found out that their mother has broken their hip and they're like, oh my gosh, the day has come. We have to sell her house. Now we have to sell our house and get a next gen or a guest suite. And then we have to buy another house. I mean, there's three sales going on. We have to sell our house and they walk out to the mailbox and there sits your beautiful colored postcard and they call you and you just got three deals. It does happen. It's timing and real estate and that is real estate. And then you have the other side of farming which is owning your farm, meaning when I come into this neighborhood, I want like 95% of the listing signs to have my face on the signs. And that comes with lots of time, legwork and having everyone in the neighborhood know who you are and you will get the biggest results and conversion from doing it that way. And we always recommend, you know, what is your message when you are farming the neighborhood? You should really have one and think about it. You really don't want to be knocking on their door or calling them and saying, do you want to sell your house? I mean, that's just kind of not the message today. And I can certainly help you with that if you need some support in that area. You want to reach out to them as a resource that you're here to help them and advise them should they encounter you know, any type of hardship and know what those options are. You know, and farming uh, is talked about, and, it, and I just wanna mention it, it's not for everyone. I mean, we have different ways to generate leads and everyone 
has, you know, everyone's really pulling you in many different directions. I want you to be on Volcon Dialer, make calls. I want you to do open houses. I want you to do social media. I want you to do this. And we're only one person. We only have so many hours in the day. So if farming is, is something that isn't something you really want to do, I would just like punch the drunk monkey on your shoulder out and put them in a little box and just wait to when you think it is a good time because it's just doesn't make sense to be overwhelming yourself with all the different ways that you can generate business. So what I'm saying is simplify your business plan and you'll be a much happier person. And, and farming, it is a marriage. It is a commitment forever. You know, I have agents that have farmed a neighborhood for seven years diligently. And she actually just got into a relationship with somebody that she was door knocking a house for. For years, they've talked and known each other. But that's incredible how that surfaced from farming. You just never know what you're going to get. And then again, I just want to go over that. I'm not the title police here. You know, we're, we are only here just to help you succeed. For agents that are on this call that haven't farmed before, this is just some intro. So it's farming with a durable plan. You wanna pick a pocket or a neighborhood um, to market that will help you get business. And then you would contact one of your title partners to pull the farm data. That's like step two. And then you want to create a Excel spreadsheet and know the data that is in your community. It's really important. Uh, consistency is the only way to win farming, and that is very true. You need to soil it, you need to water it, you need to give it sun, you need to put flower food in it, and it, it takes consistent care to get to owning your farm. You can also work on your farm daily and weekly and monthly and yearly until you reach your farming goals. And it's also a fact that moving farm areas constantly, it won't work. So stay put and you really want to think, you know, about what farm you're going to pick so that you don't waste your time and that you don't lose money. And then you want to plan out your marketing plan, door knocking schedule, events, phone calls, emails, and open houses. Let's get started choosing your farm. These are just some recommended rules of thumb of how to get started. You wanna pick a neighborhood that, base, that has 200 to 300 homeowners. You, you can do 250, it doesn't, you know, I did two, smaller, the better. For, it's a lot of homes. So if you really think about it, 200 homes is a lot to manage. I would pick one community. They recommend that you should be, it should be nearby your residence. It can be your own sub, sub, subdivision too. And, or it can be a recently sold property or a community you had dreams of living in one day. Creating your Bible masterpiece. This is where you create your Excel spreadsheet. And if anyone needs help with Excel, I certainly will meet with you and show you how to use it. And you would want to update this data every week or every single time you go to prospect, you want this updated so that when you talk to the residences and they ask you a question that you are going to have the answer. It's so important because not only it will boost your confidence when speaking to them, you are going to win them over to any other competitive you know, realtors that are out there trying to market them. You just have to know the data. So Jenny, you know I, yes. I was confused when earlier when you were referring to the Excel spreadsheet, I was thinking the list that you would pull and then no. use that to mail out. So you're saying you're actually, so make an Excel spreadsheet of all of the information I know about this area I've chosen. Yes. Okay. Yes. So let's just say that this is what happens in our title company. Um, we got or with my agents. We have a lot of agents that want to get a phone list or they're pulling data and, but they're calling that age, they're calling the homeowner and they're asking, can I, can I sell your house? Do you want to sell? Do you, and they're, the homeowner is going to say, well, what was the last sales price that sold? That agent doesn't know. Well, how long did the property in the neighborhood stay on the market? They don't know. What is the price per square feet? Oh, I'll have to get back to you on that. I don't know that. Um, what day was the last property that sold? I don't know that either. So you, you want to have all the information 
of all these questions in an Excel spreadsheet that you update every single time you go to door knock, make a telephone call, it's, or you're sitting at an open house. You want to have the answers. So, and there's like eight of them that you pull all the data from the subdivision that you can think of. And I know there's more than eight of them in there. And I've just listed A, B, and C. There's a, there's a few. Any more questions on that, Lacey? No, thanks for clarifying. Now I understand what you mean, and I see how valuable that is. I've already been caught where I got asked questions like, I'm just like I said, I'm gonna get back to you on that because I didn't know. So that's a great, great tool. This is a slide just letting you know what Chicago Title offers you as far as data. Um, we can provide you a daily NOD list, NANOS list. We can provide a daily for sale by owner list and expired list. We have open house kits. We also give a Nevada legal newsletter. I send it out twice a week to my agents. And what's included in that is the for foreclosure sale dates that are being auctioned off downtown. So it'll give you the date, it'll give you the property address. And it's, it's huge because they, the date that they give you is two weeks away from the auction. So if you do have an investor or a client, you can drive by the property, you can take a look at it and see if it's something that you wanna bid on. It will also give you a list of the marriages that have just been recorded with their name and the property address. So that, that's another niche that no one that I know of is taking seriously. And you could gain multiple properties from just contacting them. You know, they could be upgrading, downgrading, have two houses to sell, you know, buying a bigger home. So it's right there. It's not costing you a whole lot of money. It's not costing you any money to research that newsletter and pull that data out. We have an in-house customer service department that will pull all types of standard farms for you. And then we also have an outside data data source company that pulls premium farming. You know, um, in-house customer service can't, can't violate any guidelines. And that's why we have another company that can get you things. And to give you an example, what premium farming would be is that they have a, they have a data source, they have a software that can pull like people who own homes that are in the Teamsters Union or the Culinary Union. That's pretty big right now, you know, with the pandemic of a lot of the unfortunate, you know, circumstances where a lot of the hotel employees have lost their jobs. This was a hot farm last year to pull. We also have Chicago Live Farm. That is a actual database that you can log into and it monitors your your farm online versus on a spreadsheet. And it has lots of other bells and whistles such as Two of my favorite features are the anniversary date. It, if you go into a neighborhood, it will pull all the dates that the homeowner bought the home. So I would be calling those people or and sending them a congratulations card. It goes, again, these are the touches that make you stand out that you will win and sell a house. That's that's actually a really great, cute idea on that anniversary too. I just wanted to um, really fast pause and say, I'm not the only one who didn't know what NOD and NOS was because I had to text Cody, what the heck is that? So okay. Ken, I'm glad that you also didn't know because I wasn't familiar. So, so sorry. Can you explain that really fast? Yes, it's a notice of default and a notice of sale. And the notice of default is your is the first lien that is placed on a property after so many months that lets the homeowner know that you haven't paid the mortgage in three months and now we're placing like a lien on your home. And if you know, if you don't pay it, we're going to, we're going to sell your house at the auction. And that is called a notice of sale. So back when the housing market hit, uh, they, default. You, you said sale, but that's notice of default. Notice of default is after three months it's placed. It's a lien. And then the notice of sale happens after that. Whenever the bank decides that they want to place that lien, it's called an NOS, a notice of sale. So what's that time frame for the notice of sale? And that you know, that's what I was getting into is that the, the banks have their own time when they do things. And it, you can never figure out the way that they process the notice of, of sale. They could foreclose on a property in like five days when they want to, or they could have 39 notice of sale dates and it still doesn't sell. 
And that's just a part of, you know, when I was an agent, I was fortunate enough in the housing crisis, I did close 77 bank owned homes in one year. So oh. I, I do understand um, how the banks work. And there's, I spent endless hours trying to figure out that and you can't. It's just, they have their own way. They're a third party to the transaction. They can do whatever they want and they have the power to do whatever they want. And you just can't, there's just no rhyme or reason to under, to try to understand. There are, I, I see, uh, go ahead. There, the, the reason I've noticed that the timing is pretty unknown on these is because in the Nevada revised statutes, the homeowner has certain rights and so they're, they have the ability to kind of like raise their hand and object. And even if they're wrong, sometimes they'll object, which means that it just pushes the timing out a little bit more. So there's certain time frames that the, that the lender has to follow, um, but they don't necessarily even want to foreclose. Sometimes they're just trying to make you take action. So it's just really hard to know exactly what that timing is going to be. True. And there were cases, uh, you know, during the housing crisis that are true, that even if the homeowner filed a bankruptcy with the property in it, they still didn't foreclose on the property. It's hard to believe, but it is a fact. It's just a wild, wild sector, you know, of real estate when it comes to the banks. And hopefully we'll never have to revisit what we did in 2000, you know, eight and nine and 10, and the short sales that happened in 2011. So then we also have Chicago Walking Farm app. That's another um, farming tool that we have. And then we have another software for farming that's called CDL. And it's pretty cool because we can farm records 500 at a time for free that are nationwide. If you're wanting to farm in California, we can pull emails and phone numbers and they have like 33 different ways to farm that neighborhood with a subject. Meaning I want to pull target, I wanna to pull top likely sellers from those 500 people. Uh, it also has a, has a tier where we can pull, convert tenants into homeowners and pull FICO, store, FICO score and income. And that's just incredible data. If you were to want to focus and target on absentee owners or out of state. So you guys just have like a, a limited list of ways to generate business. With our support, it doesn't cost you any money for the data. Just the relationship. And, and lastly, scheduling and time blocking. You, you have to have a system to do anything that I went through today and a schedule. And if you need help with organizing that, you know, I'm the number one person that can help you. You wanna create a campaign and everything that you have in your head of what you want to do, you know, it's really a fantasy until you write it down. And then once you write it down, it becomes into our reality. I have, you know, so many agents that you know, I come across their postings on Facebook. I just door knocked a neighborhood and I didn't get, you know, I just got my door, you know, the door slammed in my face. I didn't have any success. And this business, it, it requires you to chop wood and carry water. And, and what that means is that a lot of us, including myself, you know, we have very similar jobs that we want the reward of our time and we want it now. And this is a business that is everlasting and we must continue to chop the wood and carry water and put in the time. And, and this journey of doing that is going to take us to a level of greatness. And it also will, you will see the reward of financial success as long as you continue to do your marketing and your social media and do all the things you're supposed to do, you will again, reap the reward. And you will also have freedom in your life from just doing these things that I went through today on this presentation. You have to put in the work to get the, resor to get the results. And lastly, you know, I am here to support you. Here's a roadmap to success. 
if anyone is interested in having a copy of this, I will email it to Cody and you can print this and, you know, hang it up somewhere, put it on your vision board. You know, it's a great little piece just to keep you on track. And then we are finished. Any questions that you have? Um, I just want to jump in before we go to questions. Um, I'm sure that everybody will be interested in getting your um, infographic that you just shared at the end, plus your contact information. So I'm just going to um, cut to the chase really fast and just assure everybody, we will email that out to everyone along with the link to this. You can watch it again if you need to um, with Jenny's information, because there's so much that Jenny, you guys offer. There's so many, like, as you just laid it out, there's so many options here that you could cherry pick and make awesome. So we will absolutely share that with everyone. So thank you for having me. I tried to shave it down today. I gave the presentation yesterday and they said it was like a little long. It went like an hour and, and maybe 10 minutes. So today I just tried to keep pushing. So, but any questions from any of you? Jenny, um, thank you for the stuff that you shared on the farming. It was some, that was some really good stuff there. Um, there's one thing I'll add to that just for everybody's benefit. And that is that um, farming is, um, something that a lot of people used to do. And when they were doing it, you had to be really careful that there wasn't somebody else already farming the neighborhood or somebody else who kind of already owned that neighborhood. Now that farming is something that not very many people do because everybody's gone so social media focused, um, it's less of a concern, but you still want to like look and see all the transactions that have closed in that neighborhood in the last couple of years if you see that like, you know, there's been 25 transactions and 10 of them have been done by one particular listing agent, just pick a different neighborhood. There's plenty of them to choose from. That one's gonna be really hard to crack. So focus on where there's the lowest hanging fruit and the most fertile soil. And, but again, the point of all of that is that not many people are doing it anymore. So usually you can find a neighborhood pretty easy. Um, what I like to do is make sure that it's not just a certain number of houses, but that there's a certain number of transactions happening. Because some neighborhoods, you look at them and go, oh, this is like a bullseye, but no one ever moves. So you're farming to the, to the one listing a year you might get from it. And uh, you're looking for a little more than that for the investment you're going to make long run. Um, so if you think about those things as you're picking where you're going to farm, you can, you can make a pretty good business out of it. I noticed there's some questions in the chat. Lacey, you want to take a glance and just make sure there isn't anything that we're missing that sure. we need to weigh in on. Um, just a big thank you from Kim, Maddie. Thank you. And also from Sherry Barker. Um, and then we answered the other questions about NOD and NOS. So that's everything there in the chat. Okay. Well, I'll let you guys continue your meeting and thank you for having me. And I will just, I will sign off. Have a positive and productive rest of the afternoon. You have a couple hours left. Thanks, Jenny. We appreciate it. You're welcome. It. All right. Thank take you, care. Jenny. Namaste. <laughs> All right. So we'll send everybody um, that little infographic along with her contact information because most of what she just shared is absolutely free to you as an agent.